Welcome to RGN, the regular guy news. I am your host. I am your anchor man, man, Dan Black. I am a regular guy. Let's uh get into it. What do you say? All right. Welcome back to RGN, uh, the uh, the pod, the least pretentious name in news, where we are diving into what the news is not saying but not in a conspiratorial way because i'm not a conspiracy guy at all so if you're looking if you're looking if you're a q and honor if you're a noner or what do we call noners q's q, q boys if you're a q boy patriots. sweet tea q boy pa- oh patriots that's for, if you're a patriot that's right this podcast is not for patriots uh <laughs> are they actually called patriots is that a real thing call themselves patriots wow so if you're a q supporter you're a patriot i mean there. you can't just say that that's like saying i'm if you listen to this podcast you're a new york yankee like you're, <laughs> you're not like a new york you don't get to you don't get to label yourself something you're not you know what i mean you can't just like uh, like a human being if you if you if you're a QAnon person you're a human being so you go yeah I, I guess I'm a human being. All right, it makes no sense, but you get the point. At least, no, what we're saying is what the news is not saying, meaning they're not stepping down to our level of understanding, which is like, what the F is going on? And this week, I got a great topic for you guys. Uh, We're going to be discussing vaccines. I don't know anything about a vaccine, uh, vaccines at all. Uh, I barely understand. I know they're super controversial, and I'm not even entirely sure why. So I dove deep into the COVID vaccine situation and just vaccines in general. Um, and you know what I mean by deep. By deep, I mean as deep as I'll ever go, which is two articles deep. I'll be honest. I think I dove three to four articles deep for this one. Um, anyway, uh, uh, but before, before we move on, I would like to say this podcast is grassroots Bernie Sanders style. Uh, if you could take out your iPhone product developed uh, from a uh, communist regime, China, uh, over in Foxconn, take out your iPhone product and give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. It's, that helps a lot with the algorithm. Write us a little review. We appreciate it. Um, also, tell one friend about this podcast. Uh, 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 and then maybe we'll get elected to, I don't know, whatever AOC seat is. We'll become the new AOC of podcasts. Um, okay, before we talk about vaccines, let's throw it over to our, our uh, out into the field, our only RGN correspondent, uh, Aaron Finnerty. Are you? Do we have you in the field? Aaron. Dan. Aaron. Dan. I think we lost her. Oh, Dan, no, 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 she's here. Oh, Dan, no, no. can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. So the connection was a little hazy there. I mean, maybe she's reporting from somewhere other than her apartment. Aaron, where are you reporting from anywhere out in the world as the field reporter of RGN, a true news source? Not pretentious, but a real news source. Aaron, where are you? Dan, today I'm coming to you live on the scene in my apartment in Los (laughs) Angeles, California, approximately one mile from your apartment. Okay. Well, you've been there every single episode. I'm live on the scene. Yes, but I'm live. Okay, you are live. I can I can give I'm you that. I'm on the scene. And you are via satellite somehow. Is mm-hmm. Zoom count as a satellite? I yes. think so. Yes. I think Zoom is a satellite, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we take this we take this uh this technology for granted nowadays. Anyway, guys, um as we announced on last, Aaron, thanks for coming. Thanks for oh, thanks thank you for, for uh, having me, Dan. Thanks for coming in. I know you're in a hot zone. Yeah. Keep that bulletproof vest on. Kevlar had to tell. Yeah, Kevlar had to tell. There, there could. I mean, you do live in Hollywood, so you know yeah. uh, it gets rough That's over fair. there. Uh, okay. Uh, p- before we uh, uh, get into vaccines, I want everyone to know that uh, part of being the least pretentious name in news is that we uh, hear from you, uh, not just a, a a ticker across the bottom of the screen like in uh, CNN. They do these coronavirus. Uh, you've seen these when him and when in Gupta and uh, uh, and uh, Anderson Cooper, they do those uh, pandemic things. And people, they don't answer people's questions. They're just like, tweet at us, but they don't even answer them. And across the screen, it's like, I'm coughing. Should I go to the doctor? Just lets it go by. <laughs> they don't even care. Uh, but anyway, and then they cut to a car shield commercial. Right. Those people right. are reaching out for help. <laughs> Goop does not even read in the scroll. Too bad. Too bad. We're going to Car Shield. Uh, but, <laughs> if you Zell watch, tracks. if you watch 
any of these news networks, you know exactly what Car Shield is. If you don't, how about this? I think it's a litmus test. If you don't know what Car Shield is, it means you're you're not keyed in enough. You're not watching enough. You're not you're watching enough news. <laughs> Oh, man. I know every kind of Car Shield commercial. They have the one that they got the Car Shield commercial where it's like a fake auto show. They go, this is the biggest auto show brought to you by Car Shield. And then they have this guy who's like an old f f sports reporter being, pretending he's at a car show. Mm -hmm. uh, then they just have the classic commercial where they're like, is your car broken down? They hit you with a bunch of stuff to make you think that Car Shield's this big company. Fuck Car Shield. We are you not sponsored by Car Shield. I'm anti Car Shield. I watch a East Coast uh, feed? feed of the CNN networks. My YouTube TV is still linked to the East Coast, so I get a. I, I might be getting different ads than you on so the do I, cable though. network. Oh, you, you don't get Car Shield? Shield? I don't know. I I know I get a lot of rheumatoid arthritis ads. <laughs> um, so I know the like every Zeljans. Um, I uh, know every prescription drug for R. You know what's like the biggest joke in the world to me? That guy, Dr. Huh. Drew. Oh, Dr. Drew Pinsky? Yeah, who, by the way, one time came to my improv show with his daughter, uh -huh. and he had no tickets. He was at the front desk, and they're like, oh, it's sold out at the box office. And he was trying to throw his raid around, like, yo, I'm fucking Dr. Drew. And uh, and then I was like, yo, give him a ticket. It's Dr. Drew. I love Dr. Uh -huh. Drew. In. And then we did the yeah. most offensive show in front of him and his daughter. <laughs> oh, his daughter those... I know he has triplets. His daughter's name is Paulina. Oh, really? Well, mm -hmm. anyway, I'm a big love, big love line fan from back in the day. Yeah. Well, but what is he's... Dr. Drew endorsing Car Shield? I don't. I don't like the, these guys. They, you know, they they pushing these products on CNN to elderly people, and I have yeah, no respect yeah. for it. You know what I mean? Oh, he's pushing. He's, he's pushing like, you know, if you have arthritis, this thing helps. But like, these commercials are not. I don't believe that they that you know that they actually care about this product. You know, and right. I know he's doing it for the cash. But like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. And he's one of those guys. Like, if you look at his record of stuff he says when he's like a talking head, you know, uh -huh. and it's not just him. Mm -hmm. It's like you're like it doesn't hold up well. These people are looking to fill water. time. Yeah. And uh, as someone who's looking to fill time, I understand the plight. But anyway. Uh... <laughs> so we can get him on the show, the guest on right, Talking Head here on Regular Guy News. Well, Aaron, good good reporting from the field. You already brought us an ah. exclusive, which is that not everybody gets to see the Car Shield commercial. That might be mm -hmm. a local one. Mm -hmm. Do you see the one for the gutters, for the like gutter covers? <laughs> I do know it. I know that. <laughs> I, uh, okay. I see the one that's like the putty that can like like <laughs> fill the bot. If your boat is filling with water, yeah. you can put the putty on it. And they it. show a shot of a basement and uh, and the guys are just like <laughs> gluing the basement closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a, a, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plug that, any oh, hole. I've seen that guy also. Then there's the my pillow guy. My pillow uh, guy, yeah, yeah. That, who's like, I, think he's, I used to do crack. He's a big Trump supporter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's sus. <laughs> he's a big Trump guy, the my pillow guy. But here's uh -huh. a fun fact about my pillow. Separate from the fact that and he, he's, 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 he's oh, this guy actually, the my pillow guy. If you haven't seen him, uh, don't just listen to this. Mm -hmm. Don't don't look him yeah, up. Don't look him up. The my pillow guy is like, I used to do crack, but then I got better through faith. Which, by the way, is like that's a nice thing about religion. It seems to help people who have addiction issues. It, it like right. becomes their new addiction. Or like criminals nice. in prison, like it right, works for right, right. It might, you know, I, I, that's like the upside of religion. You know what I mean? Right. You right. know, the downside of it is when it gets in the way of science, which is a big <laughs> problem now. But um. Uh, this my pillow guy is literally in these commercials. He's like a maniac. He's like, I used to do crack. I'd sleep on the street. I would suck everybody's dick for coke or whatever. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. but, and he's like, but then I found Jesus, and then I made it. But then I spent two years developing this pillow. And you're like, you know what? You're kind of like in my head. I'm like, listen, I bet this pillow's good, right? If all he makes, I'm a real sucker for like if you make one product, mm -hmm. I love that. Like I'm already like uh, this is gonna be very coastal elite, but like Lululemon, I went in there because right. they make like workout shit, and I'm jacked yeah, up yeah. to the gills. You know this, and uh, this is a news podcast. You by gotta the buy way. a bigger size. Can you tell I like, two, two uh, lattes already today. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. Lots I went in watch. there. You could go to Lululemon and get jeans and a button down. Like you're going to yeah, the club. It's like, yo, clothes. you guys make like the good workout shit. I know. So now they veered out. It makes me respect that my respect goes low. So I have a high respect for the guy who's like, 
you know, like you know, like this, like if someone's like I'm the soup king or like the soup Nazi, you know right, what I mean? Like right, I'm like, right. yo, I gotta get his soup. Like I'm a sucker for that. I, you're yeah. like you're the master of that. your craft. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, the my pillow guy. But then my mom got one of them, and my sister in law got my pillows. You know, oh, really? and they're like, it's the worst fucking pillow ever. Ew, and then I, I've heard sucks. this from more people since is that the my pillow is a terrible oh. pillow. Oh no! Well, maybe his standards are low because he's so used to like sleeping in alleys, um, crack dens, those sorts of. He things. He spoke and at the White House good. during the coronavirus pandemic. By the way, he wow, the my pillow guy. I don't know if you remember this. The the, I, I, the corona Trump's coronavirus response. Once we get all through this, through this whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. And we can look back on this in some kind of. And so, with some kind of critical lens, in a proper uh-huh. critical lens, you know, right. yeah, it, the timeline of this, I hope, I hope, and they will make documentaries about Trump's all over the place response to the coronavirus pandemic, like his true showmanship of what he did, the, turning the coronavirus into a reality show. Because if you remember, and it's all like a fog now but he literally had the coronavirus pandemic response team right he would come up there and he would have we're doing this amazing private public partnership and then they all these ceos of like target and walmart got up there at the white house no masks none of them had any masks mm-hmm. no social distancing they all hung out the, and they were like hey we're gonna give you walmart was like listen to how generous we are we're gonna give you a fucking piece of our parking lot so you could do testing. Tell me, has anybody been tested in a Walmart parking lot? I mean, I have not heard any of this. Never heard of it. <laughs> I mean, maybe yeah, it's I, happening. Been, maybe it's happening in other places, but definitely not on the list of COVID testing sites here. And even if it is happening, it's not something that they've followed through with in their promotion. Then right. Trump has gone back on testing, said we test too much. This, you know, it's, right. it's his response. Ta- even ta- the more you test, the more cases you have. The more cases you find. Uh, so, like, the one of the guys who got up there was the My Pillow guy at one point and was like, we're donating money. And then he gave these guys like free commercials for their products, essentially to the point where CNN actually stopped. We started cutting uh, away from these press conferences. Uh, right. They're right, like, we'll right. come back when he's taking questions, you know? Yeah. We don't need a, a free half hour ad from my pillow. It's literally what it was. And then you're like, crazy. Not, uh, yeah. So uh, just crazy. Like, but none of the people up there are actually like a guy, like a, like a Sean Penn or somebody who's actually science focused and right. and putting his uh, 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 fame to good use, pretty pretty interesting. It's all that publicity. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Oh my god! Not to mention, oh, this, that is so crazy. All right, I love that. It was the members, the big, the big public private that shit by the way never works you when you're the president of the united states talk about power you don't need to be like we're getting together with these private companies no no no. you have right. something called the defense defense production act <laughs> you could do whatever the fuck you want you can right. literally just say hey right. we're emergency start making this shit and hit walmart and uh or we'll get, or you could stop profiting off this country you know right right so you don't need to like you don't need to you don't need to like ask for handouts from Walmart. You control their factories as president if you want. Yeah. What is in it for him to give Walmart and Target publicity like that? Well, just because he they that was when they were like you know he was saying which is he still doing now saying the virus is going to disappear. Anyway, uh, the point is is that we have the mailbag here at the regular guy news at gmail dot com. We have announced that <laughs> I've compl- I've digressed. I've de- I, you know listen. I, I, I'm I'm off the rails today. Okay, I'm like the latte, my pillow latte, guy. Latte count <laughs> in the 80s. is that too? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the podcast we have the the, the mailbag. You send us if you have any questions, uh, things you're confused about right now. We'll dive into it for you. Or if you have any responses to stuff we've said on here, just email us at regularguynews at gmail dot com. And the other announcement is that we will have two episodes a week through the election. Um, possibly after we're, we're figuring it out still, but uh, you send us an email and our second episode drops on Friday. Um, and that episode will 
but we'll dive deeper into the mailbag. So if you have any response here this week, we can, we'll respond to you at regularguynews at gmail.com. And we already have a, 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 a response or two in there now, so we'll be discussing. Now, so that episode will drop it will, uh, later this week. It will be our response to the uh, our reactions to the uh, the debate number yes. <laughs> debate number, number two, two slash three yeah. uh, of Donald Trump and Joe yeah. Biden, which will be happening Thursday night. And if you're on my pillow sleeper, yeah, feel free to write in and tell us how you feel about it. Oh yeah, if you, I would love to hear your feedback for the my pillow. You know, I don't want you to be unfair to the my pillow guy. Your pillow. Right. <laughs> Ugh, I hate that guy. All right, now, uh, okay, so Aaron, let's dive. Let's yes, uh, let's man. let's so let's so we'll save the mailbag for later on this week when we talk about the debates. And I'm also I'm going to follow up with our undecided voter and uh, Trump voter. Uh, mm -hmm. So that'll be happening after this, the final debate, the last time they get to hear from them, unless these are – unless our Trump voter and our undecided voter decide to hit up one of the rallies, then they, maybe they can hear Ooh. from the president. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all right, let's talk about vaccines, Aaron. Okay. Okay, so here's the deal, and I'll ask you – okay, so here – I got a flu shot uh, the other day, okay? Yeah. Just to give you a little sense of how fucked up this country is, mm -hmm. I, I I go to get a flu shot. I have in, I have insurance. I have health insurance. I'm fortunate enough. Um, I go into Rite Aid, and they're like, "Hey, we have free health insurance for free flu shots if you have health insurance." Okay, so we're heading into a major crisis right now, which is flu season slash COVID season. Uh, right. the fall, right? This is what we've been worried about. They're already saying this is going to be grim these next couple of weeks, months, yeah. right? Uh huh. They say next week we'll see the uptick. That's what they're the uh, the scientists are pre predicting. So I go in there and I'm like, hey, get the flu shot, and they're like, hey, yeah, yeah, come in. They call, I call them and they're like, you come in, you don't need an appointment. I go in to give them my health insurance, then they're like. Hey, uh, well, your health insurance only covers the flu shot if you're at your uh, general practitioner. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, or if, or if you can pay for it here and then they'll like reimburse you if you like mail it in or whatever, you know? And you're like, all right, fine. I just was like, I'll pay for it. Fine. But you're like, what, are, what are people do? Like, shouldn't the federal government be giving everybody a flu shot right now for right. free yeah and if there is a place to get free health shots uh, flu shots i haven't seen one ad for it or anything i don't know and they said it was free so i paid for it then i'm gonna have to get i'm gonna have to go get reimbursed and fill out this paperwork but like shouldn't uh, it, we have like a national health crisis what the fuck's right. going on here the richest I mean, country in the world the, this is the flu shot they're giving it away for 40 dollars. you know what i mean like it's pretty commonplace and i think a lot of places do like workplaces will hook you up for free so i don't think it's like, like right so but if cost? you look at the way flu shots work we should be going up to we should be go look you can't force somebody to take a vaccine i guess mm -hmm. like well that's a whole other separate thing but like there are people who are don't have health insurance we should be setting up tables and flu shot yeah. tables and be like hey come get a flu shot because the way these the way these uh, uh, vaccines work which we'll get into is you have to have as many people take them as possible right <laughs> so okay anyway um yeah i'm gonna think to make a doctor's appointment i mean that's that not to mention that's also what happened with my covid test i went to go want to get one of those rapid covid tests and they were like uh, they, they were like, oh, well, we can give it to you free if you have an appointment with the doctor, but it's $125 if you want to just get the rapid one now. Oh, okay. So and then there's also free testing sites also, right? Like, right. There's free testing sites also, but those are not the rapid. Those are not the rapid tests, gotcha. but you also need appointments of those. And oh. a lot of those, if you're not showing any symptoms, you can't – they'll say, oh, well, you can't get a test because they're overrun, right? And right. they're privately funded. Yeah. They're yeah. private slash public funded. Um, so I'm not exactly sure you – know, you know what I mean? So you in, – in 
the last time I went, I actually wasn't feeling. I was feeling fine, but like I just kind of like checked the box. I, I I didn't feel great, but I didn't right. feel like I wasn't coughing. I wasn't. I didn't think I had COVID, but I was just honestly clicked like, oh, I'm feeling fatigued, and then they gave it to me. But I've heard of people who are not getting appointments when they're trying to sign up. So, mm-hmm. you know. Not- What's, yeah, what's, we need yeah. some kind of like plan here. System, yeah. It would be one thing if the plan was like we're all like, hey, let's prioritize for the like we had some kind of like unity as a country of like here's why we're doing this. But it feels mm-hmm. more like just hodgepodge, you know? It's definitely hodgepodge. Okay, so my question for vex, my question about the vex COVID vaccine is uh, just all the questions. How close are we to having one? How does it? What is a vaccine? <laughs> <laughs> um, how come like the flu shot? They're like, it only protects you a little bit. It does, you know, um, sh- uh, 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 and yeah, so I dove into vaccine effectiveness, all this stuff. So I'll read you a couple things. And look, okay. some of this shit's going to be like kind of boring because we're talking about vaccines, but like, f- just fucking listen to this. Okay. Because this will help you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not everything and is breaking bad. Answered on the, on the, uh, regular yeah. news and i was fucking hilarious 10 minutes ago okay yeah you got your dose yeah right so now you can hear some boring shit yeah okay? you were fucking hilarious <laughs> i was fucking hilarious a minute ago you heard me i'm basically that my pillow stuff that was gold <sighs> anyway i'm a, a great i'm a great podcast a i'm not sure if, if it's a necessary Constantly. job in this society but i'm good at it okay Sorry. Tell that, tell that to uh, the folks over at like Serial and. This, this <laughs> no, I'm no Sarah Koenig. You know what I mean? Yeah, Sarah, Sarah Koenig. Koenig. She she sympathizes with murderers. Koenig, okay? Marin, <laughs> those people would dis- disagree with you. Oh my god. Um. All right. I I, I have a funny bit, but I I don't want to veer anymore. You don't want to be too funny. This is the news. <laughs> Yes, that's right. All right, let's lock it in. Let's get serious here. Right? I, need you to, I need you to be serious here, please. Okay. So no vaccine is perfectly effective. So, because people, the, 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 I found this as a, uh, somebody, and this is an Atlantic article. Uh, I personally think the Atlantic writes some really good shit. Uh, I guess it's a little liberal leaning. So just take that or don't take that. I don't know. I don't know what you want from me. Um, but because, you know, when they say like, oh, a vaccine might be 50 percent effective, 30 percent effective, blah, blah, blah. What does that exactly mean? Well, that was my question. So I say no vaccine is perfectly effective. This is from a doctor that wrote uh, uh, Dr. Hamblin. OK. Mm-hmm. OK. And she takes questions. I, I don't know why I said it's a woman. It, like, can we just say it's a woman? Because most of the time Dr. people assume Hamblin. it's a man she- anyway. Okay, so no vaccine is perfectly effective. This isn't bad news. It's just a basic fact. No medicine is perfectly effective. No parachute is perfectly effective. And no person <laughs> is perfectly effective at whatever it is they do. Very funny, Dr. Hamblin. But though vaccines are only partly effective at protecting a single person, they can still be extremely effective collectively. Vaccine effectiveness takes into account lots of different factors. What percentage of vaccinated people develop antibodies? How many antibodies? How long do the antibodies last? How well do they protect the person from disease? Ultimately, you're left with a rough average. What percentage of people will get vaccinated are protected for a meaningful amount of time? Right? So it is like basically the way it comes down to is like, and this is what we're struggling with as a nation, which is like the vaccine might not work for you. (laughs) <laughs> the flu shot might not work for you because our bodies are right. different and we, some true. people develop antibodies and they're looking for, hey, what percentage of people develop an antibody response? You know, uh, interesting enough, and this I'll get into later because I was looking a lot into HIV stuff because mm-hmm. we don't have a vaccine for HIV. It's a virus, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but they did have a vaccine at one point that was 31% effective. And they're like, that's just not good enough. But, like, we do sometimes develop vaccines that are a certain percentage effective and then they deem it not good enough to be distributing. Oh, that's interesting. You know what I'm saying? So you're like, ooh. So they're aiming for something that's maybe 50% or higher, I'm guessing? Our most effective vaccine is the measles, I think, and it's 97%. I got that. Um, Is it measles? Should I look this up? 
Are people going to give me shit if it's if it's, the, if it's not mumps. the measles? It is. It's the measles, and it's ninety seven percent effective. Okay, that's in the according to the Atlantic. Okay, so, um, that makes sense. Don't hear it, about a lot of measles cases these days. You don't, right? So you're like, oh, that's pretty much like as good as it gets. You know, right? So, uh, <laughs> right. So so that that's the thing is that okay. So so here. Even though, like, it won't affect everybody, what we're struggling with as a nation is the fact that you're doing it for the greater good, which is now almost an un-American concept, right? right. <laughs> and it's cause, okay, and that's the problem with masks and why vaccines, I, th- I think personally, are going to face a very similar backlash like masks, even if Biden's president and is like, take this vaccine, you know? Yeah, right. Right. But here's One how this works. Another. If everyone in the population takes a vaccine that is, say, 70% effective, the effects add up quickly. The result is a population that is protected and more quickly achieves herd immunity than a population with a less effective vaccine. Um, occasional cases of COVID-19 might still arise, but enough people will not contract the virus to prevent widespread outbreaks. So, uh, uh, So when Anthony Fauci the head of Natural Institute of Allergies and Infectious Disease, you know who he is, mentioned the possibility of vaccine being 50% effective. He wasn't saying it as though the vaccine would be a failure. He was saying he would consider it a success, uh, an intervention worth using, a better and better than nothing, though his hope would be to start with a product that's somewhere closer to 75% effective. Right. So the point is, is that if you take the, uh, so in layman's terms, if you take this vaccine, it might not work for you, but if we all take it, and let's say there's a seventy percent chance that it works for you. That means that when you get the virus, it goes in your body. Your body won't get the virus. You won't take it. Your body knows how to fight it all before it can be replicating, and you get to the contagious step. Is what I right. think. Right. Well, know. and if like you live in a house with other people, and the vaccine works for like the three people that you live with, they're not going to transmit it to you. Because they won't have it because they're protected by the vaccine. It's basically like you don't get it because you develop antibodies. Mm-hmm. So your body is already ready to fight it off. Because what a vaccine is, is essentially a version of the virus that tricked right. your body into thinking you had it already. Right. It's, right? Which is so, like, like the flu shot, like why people get sick when they some, – sometimes people get sick from a flu shot. Right. And so they're, they're saying – right. And that's, that's kind of the, what's interesting now is because – scientifically unfortunately we're talking about not a numbers game like yeah. science is numbers so the numbers is like hey look they test these things to be as safe as possible they can't be a hundred percent safe but there's these thresholds they come up with for the greater good mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and so it looks like some people who take flu shots get fever yeah it's just the deep, like i took my flu shot my arm was a little sore and I was fine. Did it hurt? They, no, no, okay. but my arm was like a little sore. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm always sore because I'm, you know, well, jacked. Yeah, and of course it wouldn't hurt you because like. Massive strength. Yeah, massive strength. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I sleep well with my pillow. But uh, so, and uh, <laughs> this guy owes me some cash. I mean, I did talk shit about him, but I said his product. Episode. There's no bad press. Hmm. Uh, you gotta start endorsing a different pillow. <laughs> right. So okay. So so does that make sense? For yeah. Vaccine stuff like I, that's basic shit, but I didn't understand that. I was like, why are they like it was only fifty percent effective? It just means because oh, only some people develop it, but it's all about the actual herd immunity. So it's a way to basically what we're doing is, uh, the vaccination is a way to like speed up herd immunity. Now herd immunity, by the way, if people want to know. Why that's not – people are like, hey, we should just try to get herd immunity or herd mentality, which is what <laughs> the Trump – the president literally called it herd mentality. Um, okay. Because right now in the percentage, we only have like – I don't know, something like 8% of people have been infected overall. Mm-hmm. And, and you need to get to like 60 70%. So like that means we'll have millions of deaths. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Literally millions of deaths. Right. Okay. So right now we're we're in this crisis, and we need to bond together as a nation to be like, hey, we take this vaccine. 
And uh, God, boy, oh boy, did are we not what we used to be in World War Two? I mean, right. Well, so this isn't polio, people. No. Whew. Anyway, uh, well, and, I guess and now... so. Yeah, it's hard to get. It'll be hard. People, it's hard to get everyone to wear a mask. So stands to reason that it'll be hard to get everyone to take a vaccine. But there's people who are on the side of like, well, if Trump and Russia say this vaccine is cool, I'm into it. The majority of people are like, no, if the scientists say it's cool, I'm into it. Like, will those two groups ever come together on a vaccine? I I don't know. I don't know. I I feel like the only way to like... The only way to make anything work nowadays, like with this country, is to do. We don't have to have like a formal like succession or whatever, you know. Right. We don't have to have formal like, uh, like have like oh like this this country's get this state's gonna cede from the union. But what we need to right. do is like we need to like close the fucking borders. We need to be like, all right, guys, listen, your state, okay, your deal, you want to stay open, okay, well then, you know, go to where you want to be for the next year. And like, we'll give you a month to go wherever you need to go. You uh-huh. know what I mean? So not what, I'm what? probably going to get set up shop and I'm probably going to get stuck here where I'm embedded for the next year. Right, right, right. right. But if you're like, you're like in Montana for work and you're like, oh, I don't like what they're doing here in Montana. Then you right. go to California or whatever. And then mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what it's and then California, you create your own herd. Everyone needs to make right, their own right. herds here. Yeah. Obviously, that would never work and also has crosses a lot of it's very problematic, but I'm just saying I'm th- what, from what I'm reading. OK, so anyway, let's move on. So the thing is, like, how close are we to a vaccine is what I was curious about, because so they're saying, like, that's another thing that's confusing. They're like 12 to 18 months away. Uh, what's it? Robert Redfield, the head of the CDC, said that we're probably uh, Q3 next year. But then you're hearing like they're making a lot of progress and then they're like, we might have something in 2020 and then Trump spreads all this misinformation about Operation right. Warp Speed. So I was like, OK, so first thing you need to understand is the thing that the fucking news doesn't tell you. This is an example in the news. You're like, who do you think we are? We're fucking dummies, please. Right. Like, so they're like, oh, well, one thing's in phase one. This one's in phase two. What the fuck is phase one and phase two? Do you know what that is when they do that? You're like, it's in phase three trials. Is that good? All right. Sounds good. I don't know. No, I don't know. So, Aaron, I go How long are the phases? I'll I'll let you know. I'll tell you now where we're at. Okay. 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 I don't. I went to a BBC article. So this is out of the country. Okay. They created the British office. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. So how are vaccines tested? In the preclinical t- stage, that's the first thing of testing. Researchers give the vaccine to animals, see if it triggers an immune response. Okay. I'm not going to get into if that's controversial. I, I Listen, I like animals. I've rescued an animal, but I agree. Let's test out animals. I got no problem with that for vaccines. Okay? Mm-hmm. It's not makeup. <laughs> you know? Right. right. All right. <laughs> okay. In phase one. Of clinical testing, the vaccine is given to a small group of people to determine whether it's safe and to learn more about the immune response it provokes. So phase one, they start going to people. So preclinical stage, phase one's people. Phase two, it's given to hundreds of people. Uh, so, so, And that's when they start trying to figure out more about its safety and also about correct dosage. Uh, wow. human, phase, so human guinea pigs to see what the threshold is for... The amount yes. of the vaccine to give them. Absolutely. This is a, and they, they do this in your sleep, but it's completely involuntary. No, no. Uh, <laughs> it could have been done to one of us. Who knows? No, this is what probably a lot of Ouch, actors. He sneaks into your apartment <laughs> and pokes you. You don't know it. My guess is this is a lot of actors and, uh, and yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's given to, uh, so that, okay. Then phase three, the vaccine is given to thousands of people. Uh, and then they start tracking more side effects and effectiveness. And they also start introducing a control group with a placebo. So basically the f- trials is just what, how many more people they feel comfortable giving it to. So when you hear right. phase three, that means they're getting it to thousands of people. So that's pretty good. That being said, uh, I think from my I'm looking at this stuff, when st- it's not like if something's in phase three that it's going to work. 
It just means it's promising because we're seeing some antibody response. But if you get an antibody response, like we said, it's what percentage of antibody response is good enough. And that's tricky. Like I said, even for HIV, they had stuff like an antibody response. Okay. So in terms of... In terms of... Uh, There's only throws three phases. Is actually, this is from The Guardian. Correct? Yeah, it says it's phase three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the last phase. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's where we're at right now. It looks like there's three... Wait, let me bring up my chart here. Okay, this is now we're getting into really complicated shit for me. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is, okay. I think there's right now three vaccines right now. Where is that article? That are in, um, yeah, here. We have three vaccines right now that are, that are the furthest along. Okay. okay. One that's already in, Okay. Okay, University of Oxford and AstraZeneca is the company. Mm, AstraZeneca, we know them. Big Pharma, right? Yes. This, yes, uh, you, Big Pharma. University of Oxford vaccine is delivered via a chimpanzee virus uh, called the vaccine vector. So they would give this to a ch- van- chimpanzee. The, the chimpanzee, the vector contains the genetic code of the protein spikes found on the coronavirus and triggers a strong immune response in the human body. The vaccine is in a combined 2-3 trial in the UK and has recently gone into phase 3 trials in South Africa and Brazil. Mm. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the first one. The Canzino Biologic Inc., uh, that's the company, Beijing Institute of Biotechnology, this is Chinese. The vaccine developed by Chinese company... Um, uh, and 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 this institute, by the way, is is uh, basically part of the Chinese military. Uh, they showed, you know, everything over there is it's communist. So uh, it showed promising results in phase two testing, and little no data from the trial trial has been published. In a world first, the vaccine has now been approved for military use, but it's unclear how broadly it be distributed. So in China, they're already giving this shit to the military. Oh, okay. And okay, there's China. no published information about it so like this would be an interesting thing for trump to bring up if he had any kind of if he knew anything like if he had any it'd be like it'd be interesting to be like look they're already put like if he wants to knock china be like hey what are they doing over there they're already injecting people you know Yeah, they're vaccinating their troops over there (laughs) i don't know i don't know i'm not sure how it works but he's got his spinsters or whatever over there yeah yeah and then this one we've actually this is the one the American one that we've heard the most about, which is Moderna. Mm. Um, it's an American biotech company, and they're they have uh, they're using messenger RNA to trick the body into producing viral proteins itself. No mRNA vaccine has ever been approved for an infectious disease, which is what they're doing right now. So what they're doing right now has never actually worked. <laughs> Um, and Moderna has never brought a product to market, ever. Ever. Okay. <laughs> but proponents of the vaccine said it could be easier to mass produce than traditional vaccines. So, great. We can make a lot of it, even if it sounds like it's never worked. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to get to the market, but we can make a bunch of it. Yes. Great. great. So... <laughs> I'm with, I don't know, AstraZeneca seems to be leading the charge in South Africa and Brazil. I mean, which one would you take today? If you had to take one of the three. Well, definitely. The American one, which is a process that's never worked. It seems to be we're diving into. A A one with no information from a Chinese military. Um, me personally, I'd probably go with the Chinese military. (laughs) Yeah, just to see. Why not, right? Just let it ride. It's 2020. Well, I think one of us should do AstraZeneca. (laughs) <laughs> and one of us should do Chinese military just to see, compare and contrast. I would love that. <laughs> Got to get down to Brazil. Um, okay, so here, I got a little more information. Mm-hmm. If you're feeling it. You feeling I'm it? Feel, I'm you're feeling, feeling it. it. Okay. I'm feeling it. Feeling the effects. Okay. Here we go. Research, uh, so oh, <laughs> they say about 240 vaccines are in early development. With 40 in clinical trials and nine already in the final stage of testing on thousands of, pe- of people. So there's, I, those three were the top three, but there's, it looks like there's six more uh, that are already in 
stage three because there's thousands of people being tested on it. So that's good. Um, the Oxford vaccine one, I said that it triggered a, an immune response already. Um, ooh, look at that. AstraZeneca, they already have a supply chain going for that. Uh, for to make they're already making 100 million doses so if it doesn't work they'll just okay. throw them in the trade i guess yeah yeah forget about it um huh. and this uh this uh it looks like this astrazeneca one is that the one you chose though you said the chinese one is a joke but the astrazeneca yeah, one i would go with the one astrazeneca uh, yeah that seems like the one that's furthest along that really does that actually here so so it's saying is that the first human trial data back in May indicated that the first eight patients taking part in a U.S. study all produced antibodies that could neutralize the virus. Yeah, the Oxford University buy-in on that, for some reason, gives me added trust. So, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, wow. Those antibodies pop in. Okay, so when will we have this vaccine? Okay, really so question. a vaccine would normally take years, if not decades, to develop. Right. Researchers hope researchers hope to achieve the same amount of work in only a few months. Most experts think a vaccine is likely to become widely available by mid twenty twenty one, about twelve to eighteen months after the new virus. Um, that would be a huge scientific feat, and there is no guarantees it will work. But scientists are optimistic that trials are successful. Uh, but if the uh, but they're optimistic that if trials are successful, then a small number of people, such as healthcare workers, may be vaccinated before the year end. It's worth noting that four coronavirus vaccines already circulate in human beings. They cause common cold symptoms and don't uh, have vaccines for any of them. Okay, good. All right, great. Okay, so a vaccine typically takes years if not decades to produce and this is being done in the span of 12 to 18 months so i'm wondering how that's possible like what is happening what corners are being cut what's being expedited here to make this process so much faster is okay. it like an approval chain thing so i do have some information about that okay um First, yeah, somehow I do have these answers, <laughs> even though, you know, when you're, I'm, I'm at the, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm way above my pay, pay grade right now, but I'm learning a shit ton. Um, last thing I want to read is how many people need to be vaccinated. Okay. Uh -huh. It's hard to know without knowing how effective the vaccine is going to be, but it's thought that 60 to 70% of people need to be immune. Uh, in order to you know, which to get herd immunity, which is make it stop spreading easily, but that would be billions of people around the world, even the vaccine, even even if the vaccine worked perfectly. So thinking about, uh, I mean, we have uh, that's a lot of people to get to take the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, not to mention the amount of misinformation that's going to be going on to get people to not take it. Right. Um, People are stopping t people. Wow. And the other thing about it is that they say these vaccines will be inevitably less successful in older people because an mm -hmm. aged immune system does not respond as well to immunization. Uh, and that happens with flu. So already like this already this virus affects older people pretty badly now. Right. And so we're not saying so. Look, the point is, is that. <laughs> We're going to be living with this for a long time, whether we like it or not. And with the how silly and stupid people can be here, mm -hmm. uh, no matter how we advance in science, this is going to be there's going to be so many different types of hurdles to get everybody on the same page here. So, OK, so your question is why. So your question actually brings me back to when I was looking at this article about uh, it was a Wall Street Journal article that was interesting that was kind of focused on Fauci and uh, HIV. And your question was kind of something i had also which was uh about like is it kind of why why is this vaccine coming so fast compared to the knowledge that we don't even have one for something like an hiv they say the flu mm -hmm. shot the, so okay so one thing about coronavirus right now that is promising um is that several doctors believe it's far more likely a coronavirus vaccine could be found more than an HIV or AIDS vaccine in the near future because the virus appears to be relatively stable while HIV uh, rapidly mutates. Oh, interesting. So, 
even if they believe a 12 uh, projected timeline of 12 to 18 months is aspirational they feel optimistic not to mention in terms of like uh um not, not to mention that you know i'm talking uh, just to compare it to aids and, and, and mm -hmm. hiv like we're not scientific advances have been insane since right, the 80s right, when right. that was first on the scene but they say like the first five months of coronavirus right now like dr fauci made a comment just saying like uh i read a quote of him saying that like these first five months have been like 10 years of progress <laughs> uh because of just like how much focus there's been on it um mm -hmm. combined with the uh all the you know technological advances uh mm -hmm. in that in that time frame so uh that's pretty optimistic stuff okay Great. now hold on mm -hmm. so okay so here's okay so here's some interesting shit though uh <laughs> okay is that the, the the good news is is that it might take longer to get this vaccine than we're saying right. and then also we don't actually have in place the no matter what trump says he said oh the military is going to do it we don't have the distribution plan that he's kind of acting like we do mm -hmm. um but let's say we have a a version of the vaccine maybe it's whatever blank percentage of it and it's effective getting it to people okay the the cool thing is that uh, the tide can turn on this whole thing with successful treatment, even if there is no vaccine. Uh, like that's what happened with HIV and AIDS, which is that the targeted therapies could still save the lives of six patients uh, and preserve the health of those at the highest risk. So this dude, James Curran, who was the dean of public health at Emory in 1991, and he was tapped to head the CDC AIDS task force. Uh, he learned from AIDS that mitigation, safer sex and social distancing, not like safer sex, which is for HIV. And now social, they're equating social distancing as like the safe sex of Corona, right? right? Like the right. metaphor. Um, but they, it won't prevent transmission alone. What's also necessary is containment and more stringent measures taken by people who knew they have the virus and containment requires testing. So, like, basically, no matter what, testing is the answer to this whole thing. Um, and like then the, following the proper protocols after you've been tested positive. Right. This is, like, this is, the, the, this is really interesting to me. The development of an accurate test reduced transmission during the AIDS epidemic by 85%. Okay? Wow. Because people took knowledge of their HIV status seriously and acted accordingly. By comparison, a one-month isolation after a positive corona test would be easy, he said, and it's not too late to implement this dual strategy. But the problem is lack of widespread testing in the U.S. that delayed American response to, to, to the coronavirus uh, was costly, and testing remains inadequate. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like this guy... Yeah, so it's almost like with HIV, the lessons here, they're like the the fact that we haven't learned our lesson in HIV with testing, like all the testing was so late that so many people died. It's exactly what's happening now is that we are killing people without testing. So we could talk vaccines all day because they feel like the cure all for this whole thing, but right, they're this not going to be the answer. Yeah. It's not the cure all. Well, we could get lucky and get one. That's 90. We get a measles vaccine, but I doubt right. the, if we get a vaccine that, so, so here's my, here's, okay. Here's the damn black layman's understanding mm -hmm. of this. And Aaron, you tell me if you agree okay. and tell me your takeaway as well. Okay. And I know we threw a lot of information at you, but I thought that was really, if somebody did this in a way more eloquent way on the news, it would be, extremely useful i watch a lot i i cannot say this enough it's like people's complaints about the mainstream media there's a lot to complain about it's true they're they're hawking fucking car shield every second and my pillow is ridiculous no but they, 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 everything is like repeating the same stuff over and over they baby you and they like give you the most surface information and then sometimes they play on your emotions and blah 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 but the we need kind of just like the abcs here just fact I, everyone's like, oh, they're they're like, they, uh, they have political motives and blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, that's there, but that 
if you're any dummy can see through that when you're like, all right, I see this person clearly doesn't like Trump. Okay, so then I could just cut through their fact here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like they don't just tell you this stuff, which is like I just need a piece being like, what is a vaccine? How does a vaccine work? When do you have vaccine? Like this is it, like a robot. Right. These 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 fucking CNN shows should be hosted by just a, like like a, a Stephen Hawking voice that just tells you. I yeah, don't they need... need to have like an educational segment in the twenty four hour news cycle where it's like, here's what you need to know, regular guys, and then drop the science, and then like you know. The rest of the day, you can have your pundits and your talking heads and, and like, guests and stuff. I get the pundits. I like it because it's like, like I love Chris Cuomo's style. Like, you know, like I watch him and yeah. I'm like, he's I a little weird too. sometimes. But like, I'm like, I love his. He has a couple things. You're like, he's like, I, you always have a platform in the show. He follows up with people. He gives out his personal number. Like, yeah, there is a personal touch to it. I love when Brian Williams is like, uh. Is like day four hundred thirty six <laughs> of the Trump administration. Like I fucking love that. He's like a robot. Williams I love always that has too. like old timey zingers too that yeah. he'll throw out. Yeah, he does that. He kind of does like the equivalent of like a action movie one liner. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like he had the last word. Anyway, like something like that. There's no context there. You make with the line before that, but uh, and then also my favorite person on CNN is Brianna Keeler. Big um, Keeler heads here in Argentina. <laughs> I watch Keeler every day. I think she's great. But the point is, like, my, my, my assumption here is this. But what I'm pulling away from this is that I think we're years away from the measles version of the COVID vaccine, mm -hmm. right? A 97% yeah. effective. Yeah. I believe that based on these trials in whatever completely unqualified terms that we are probably sometime end of this year slash next year get the 50% version, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to. And that they say we need 60 to 70% of people. This is all that should be said on the news. 60 to 70% of people need to take this vaccine for it to be 50% effective to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's not going to happen. My guess is that mm, my guess is if we're lucky, 50% take it, but probably closer to 30 yeah. or 25. And it depends also on what system is in place to give it to people like right like so do the, we do a contagion lottery scenario right. or how are we getting it to people and it's a, like let's i'm even aaron i'm moving i'm even going past the lottery i'm going toward like i'm just talking about like okay let's say it's accessible right now literally there's a, there's a guy uh in your whole foods or your fucking grocery store it's a whole foods for me it's i live in la foods. i made a coastal elite okay tell the it's folks maybe tell an people. It's an air one, absolutely, which is – you don't even know what that is, okay? Let me tell you what that is. That's cool. $500 per piece of chicken is what that is. Yeah. There was a guy in our local air one being walked like a dog um, by a woman. I saw that picture. Week. That was insane. Yeah. I loved it. I, 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 you know what? I, I loved a that also. That's just guys. really funny. Uh, mm -hmm. But, okay, uh, I love people letting their freak flag fly. Okay, anyway. So – Let's say there's somebody who gives it to you at checkout. You go to the grocery store and they're like, hey, by the way, do you want to donate the kids or take a, a <laughs> Corona shot right now? You can just do it right now. Mm -hmm. Even then, I think the percentage of people taking it is going to be less than half of the people. The yeah. point is that coronavirus is here to stay for all of 2021 at least, at yeah. least, okay? At least. Now, that doesn't mean that based on your pod of people, your life won't go back to normal in some semblance. It won't be fully normal, it won't, you know, for a while for years but the point is is that even with the vaccine it's not a cure-all okay until we get that other vaccine so basically our tools right now are social distancing masks right okay and those are just from looking at this i'm seeing that they're infinitely more important than i even thought starting this podcast and then the other element of it is widespread rapid testing because the odds are, my, I think we're going to have therapeutics before we have full, uh, we're going to have like hard therapeutics before we have uh, 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 a full like cure-all vaccine. Mm -hmm. But even that will make our vulnerable population of pre-existing conditions and elderly people are still going to be vulnerable, it sounds like. Yeah. Just like with the flu. I mean, the flu, like 60-something thousand people die a year of the flu right. or whatever. Right. And we say, oh, that's a number and they're old people, but... 
let's just take a step back. Somebody said this on CNN, and I thought it was really great, okay, whether you like CNN or not, which was like, there are very healthy 80-year-old people, okay? I heard that, yeah. Right? And I was like, yeah. you saw that guy? And you're like, yeah. yeah. Like, I was like, this this guy, it shocked me because we've like, you know, they, uh, you know, uh, 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 Charlie from Always Sunny, like, we're living a real throwaway culture, you know? And, mm-hmm. and you're like, yeah, like, how many people, I talked, my wife's grandfather is 97 years old. We called him on his 97th birthday. Mm-hmm. Talking to him about movies, he has a full memory, you know? You're right. like, well, do we disregard human life this much where we think 80 means you're done? 80, listen, we have to understand that, like, with modern <laughs> medicine, 80 is not as old as 80 used to be. Right. 80 is not that much older than, like, you know, our parents or something like that. Like, and the guy on CNN was saying like the people who you're thinking about, like, Oh, they're all old people. It's just people in nursing homes. It's like, no, these are people who are old, but who are living active lives, watching kids, living with families, working, like doing their thing. Yeah. He made this comment. Like, like, they make the sauce bodies. Yeah. They make right? the like, sauce. Yeah. I was like, I was like, this guy's so Italian, but, yeah. um, he was but like, like a healthcare like, worker. So like right now, really, and if you're listening to this podcast, like the odds are you, this, you really need to check in with yourself again about mm-hmm. how much you respect other human life. And the bottom line is fine. There's a level of personal responsibility here, which we all need to take, but which we're learning about. But like it all goes back to Trump. And this was the most this is the most baffling presidential failure of all time. The most unnecessary one. All you had to do back in even June was go, <laughs> I had it wrong. And then right. course correct, and he would have won this election, I think. You know? If he, Definitely. If he could have corrected this problem, that would have been a huge buy-in. But it's the end of October, and it's getting worse. No, no. Now, now, now he has like to double down on the fact that Corona is fake. You know? And right. he still might win. But, but, uh, 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 but the bottom line is, that testing is – and whether you like Nancy Pelosi or not, that first CARES Act, that testing, testing, testing. That's the point of this bill. Testing, testing. Testing is so important. It is so, so, so important. More important than the masks, more important than the social distancing is what I'm learning from this. So the testing needs to happen ASAP. Testing needs to be going up, up, up. Right, at, because the testing is really like – the platform for social distancing, self-isolation, quarantine, and all of those things that are important to stop the spread, right? So if you don't test and you don't know that you have it and you're walking around, then it there's no point. Or if you're like guessing, you know? Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, th- uh, I think I think that's all the information uh, that people need. So uh, yeah, I learned a lot from this, from my my minimal research into this, yeah. which is just it's crazy how uninformed we all are, including and especially me. I mostly watch pro wrestling. Okay, right. Well, that's uh, facts. And, <laughs> and the fact that if you look into this a little bit. There's no excuse for how much this government has been letting us down. Um, We've been through this before with HIV. Like, if you think about, like, okay, there was HIV. Then, you know, people started getting tested. And then people started doing safer practices to stop from killing one another and spreading this disease. Like, we can do that. Like, it's happened before. Like, this isn't new territory. Yeah. Um, I mean... Whatever, this is a separate conversation. We'll yeah. just end on this, but I might have overdone it with the AIDS scare when I was a kid because they really freaked me out so mm-hmm. much that, like, mm-hmm. anytime I had any kind of interaction with a female, I was like, well, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. You know, that's a healthy way to be, though. No, it was. It was completely healthy. It was, you can't, there's, well, you know, scientifically, there's no such thing as too much information. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Um, which is uh, I learned that on the podcast Human Brain. We've talked about that, mm-hmm. uh, and that is it, it. That's really hard for people to take because we want we shield ourselves from information constantly, right? Uh, because it makes our lives easier. Whether it's like you don't want to look at a bill, right? Like yeah. you know, that's a great example I always give. Is like you get a bill in the mail, 
why don't you just open it right away? It'd be nice to know how much you owe because it's going to stress you out. So you uh-huh. shield yourself from that. And that's what's going on in this country is like right. people shielding ourselves from uh, 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 from information. But because it's scary. So it's like when I was a kid, it was easier to not know. When I was like a horny kid, it was easier to not know <laughs> about HIV. I could get HIV by being reckless. Right. But I was better off for that information even with that additional anxiety. You know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, because uh, it kept me safe. And, uh, the uh, more uh, you know. The more you know. So anyway, uh, hey, thanks for listening to this podcast, guys. I learned a lot. Many people are saying they learned a lot. Um, mm-hmm. We actually got some. We got some feedback here. Stupid. Oh, okay. Stupid. Oh. Stupid. Stupid. Hey. Stupid. 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 Yeah, yeah, that I came in. That, that was. Uh, that was from Mike Pence. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was that just came in from uh, Premier Mike Pence. All right, everybody. Uh, remember, last thing to say, we'll have another episode post the. Uh, uh, it'll come out Friday. Uh, post the debates, uh, Donald Trump and uh, Joe Biden, Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe, Sleepy Joe, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sleepy Joe, or strong, strong Trump, uh, <laughs> strong man Trump, and uh, we'll talk about, and then we'll hit, we'll hit the mailbag. We'll listen to from you guys any responses to stuff did we said here on past picture? episode. Do you see that picture of Trump where they like photoshopped his makeup off? No. Oof. Think about it. It's Gorgeous not. man. He's a beautiful smile, though. You know that, right? Oh. Let me see that smile. <laughs> By the way, I gotta say this is that um, my um, uh, uh, so the email is regularguynews at gmail.com. Yeah. And remember, give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and tell one friend about this podcast if you dig it. Uh, turn off the news, turn on RGN. Okay, but I'll say this is a set, uh, small thing. From those last debates, the, f- the thing that I kept noticing was that, that, uh, that like black woman in the back who was nodding the every nodding. time Trump yeah, said something. Yeah. And so it was so awesome because my friend Ego, uh, who's on Saturday Night Live, uh-huh. um, uh, former student of mine, by the way, it's taught her everything mm-hmm. she knows. Um, she'll she'll tell you that. She will tell you, ask her that. Um, <laughs> she'll tell you. She played. Uh, she played that woman just bobbing her head in the back mm-hmm. on the SNL, and I was like, that is that was so fucking fun. What a funny thing to point out. That woman. She Trump was like was the saying fly of, of that, that town hall. <laughs> yeah, that was so that was so funny. But I didn't feel like it was like the fly everyone was talking about. That woman, I feel like because the. The, they had dueling town halls. It wasn't so right. we were, were all were watching both and um, and more biting up more viewers. People watching that, and so uh, I don't I don't think that that was like a huge huge thing. I did uh-huh. see some stuff about it. it wasn't huge, but just uh, I said it was just she was it was it was so funny the way they did that. <laughs> <laughs> because also the woman was wearing a mask, so you couldn't right. see her face at all. All you saw was her face. every head time. <laughs> And nothing Tred Trump was saying was sensical, and she just was like into all of it. It was yeah, great. Yeah, we looked her up after the fact. She's uh, she's nutty. Trump supporter? Do you look her up? Mm-hmm. The woman? What was mm-hmm. her deal? Uh, Trump supporter. She ran for Senate, maybe somewhere. Uh, did not win, I think, but huge Trump supporter and a kooky person. Oh, okay. Seems like a seems wacky. Wasn't that one woman who was thinking of voting for Biden, but was just like, "You're so handsome." Yeah, she's leaning Biden. They said leaning was, Biden, but she was like, "She was You're leaning so Biden." Handsome. She was a she was a Jewish woman, and her question was about um, dreamers. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was so funny. She's like, "You're so handsome, Prezi. You're so handsome." When you oh, smile, and then she's like, "What about the dreamers? How come you want to lock us out of, of them out of the country? You piece of shit!" Like it was yeah, so she weird. Like, shit. Really bled in. <laughs> <laughs> weird runway on that question oh anyway everybody oh, okay. um thanks for tuning in hit the mailbag regular ground news at gmail do what you can right now support the podcast this podcast is grassroots and word of mouth um let the people know and uh thank you for tuning in and everybody signing, signing off. off on rgn thank you to aaron on the field i am dan black and everybody remember to stay regular